All right. Welcome back to another live training here at Solar Surge. We have the live stream going out today to LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, and Facebook as well. Now, in this week's training, we're going to be talking about how to sell solar with battery storage. We know that this is a topic and a question uh, that a lot of you guys are facing, uh, especially those of you that are out in California, uh, knowing that the, the net metering rules are not like they used to be, where you could dump your power to the grid and get full price credit. Um, or you might be in another market where, where there just tends to be more interest and more demand and storage for emergency backup power reasons. Now, in today's training, I would like to introduce to you our special guest. Justin Hopkins is joining me here from Franklin WH. Uh, for those of you who've been following the channel, you know Franklin is one of the most innovative new battery uh, companies that we've been following. Uh, and Justin and I have had a chance to work together at a number of different events and uh, different educational platforms and really looking forward to have him on the broadcast today uh, to teach us all about you know how to sell solar with batteries and provide some perspective you know from the manufacturer side as well so justin it's really good to see you man welcome back or welcome to uh the solar sirs live training oh thank you joe it's a pleasure to be here i'm such a big fan of what you're doing and you as a human being um so real pleasure i'm sure this is going to be great yeah, man, really, really looking forward to getting into it. I know I, I saw you briefly at SolarCon. I think we just kind of passed each other uh, briefly in passing there, but really looking forward to see you and your team again in person uh, in Las Vegas uh, next month. Uh, but for today, let, let's try to come with as much value as we can for, for all these reps and contractors out here that want to understand how do we sell solar with batteries? The, the, the pricing's different. The, the sales process is different. The reason why the homeowners are even interested in it is, is totally different. And so I think that's, that's a lot of what we can talk about today so that the audience is, is as prepared as possible. Uh, but before we dig into that, you know, for those that don't know you, can you share with us a little bit about your background and how did you first get involved in solar? I mean, what did you do before, but then what kind of got you all in <laughs> on solar? What have you been doing for the past decade here? Yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of a funny story. I, you know, I've, I was a musician in my past life, uh, so I started... Um, <clears throat> I moved to Los Angeles when I was about 22 years old and started working with a lot of artists like Babyface and Snoop Dogg. Landed myself a, a job as a guitar player for Carson Daly's show on Last Call with Carson Daly on NBC. And um, it was actually funny the day they 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 basically canceled the show and moved it to an offsite single camera was the day I was getting my solar installed on my house in Redondo Beach. Got out of the limousine and you know there's like 12 people on my roof. Now, mind you, my house was built in 1958, so I was a little bit livid. Um, I didn't know much about solar. I think I paid $38,000 for a four kilowatt. Um, so somewhere in the like nine bucks a watt <laughs> range. And uh, yeah, and uh, basically that, you know, that moment of having that conversation with that owner of saying, like, this process has been really rough on me. I didn't really enjoy it. I'm really unhappy with the finished product. Um, kind of moved me to want to get involved with solar because I felt like there was a better way to do it. Um, so yeah, I've been doing this about 15 years now and, uh, you know, very passionate about the solar industry as a whole. Um, it's been kind of commoditized, right, with the panels and everything else, but um, seeing storage become a, a real a viable product in the space, that makes it interesting. It's There's more color, there's more value, there's more warmth to the conversations because we're able to do more for the customers with storage uh, than we ever were with, with just solar alone. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, uh, you know, it kind of br brings me back, you know, back in that those, those days, and you got started even before I did, but, um, you know, the, the people that were investing in solar back then were people that they were, they were enthusiasts. They, 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 they had a legitimate reason. They were really believers of the technology you know, right. th th this was back in the days, guys, before they had solar loans and you could just say, hey, you're going to lower your bill. We're going to cut your monthly bill in half. Yeah. Th this was not that. You know, the, the cost of solar was about triple what it is today. Uh, and, and there were very, better, very little, if any, financing options. So a lot of these folks were having to save up or use cash that they've already saved up. So they were really had to be bought into the idea of going green or being energy independent. Uh, and I know that that was my experience. You know, when I started in 2012, I was doing purely off-grid systems only. There was no net metering. Frankly, there was no permitting or inspections. It, it was purely independent off-grid systems, solar batteries with, with off-grid inverters uh, that could run, a, you know, run an installation completely independent of the grid, or in some cases, 
run as kind of like a backup generator where they would have like a manual transfer switch to switch them off of grid power onto solar <laughs> battery power, you know, for some certain number of circuits that they identified. But, um, well, Justin, you know, you know, for those maybe who are younger in the industry, can you kind of give us a recap from your perspective? How have things changed from when you started in solar as a solar professional or a solar salesperson uh, into, into kind of where things have come today? Yeah, you nailed it on the head, right? It was uh, early adapters are typically big enthusiasts. Um, to, to bring up your point, I actually paid for mine with my 401k. <laughs> so that was... Uh, that was the method that I used to financially make it feasible for me because I didn't have 38 grand um, in a shoebox at the time. But yeah, the industry has changed. A, I think that you have a lot of more, a lot more high performing equipment in the space. Um, you have a lot of more choices. So we've moved from you know grid controllers, ATSs, external ATSs, uh, string inverters to optimizers, micro inverters. Uh, you know, I think the panels I put on my house were 175 watts. Um, so, you know, now we're dealing with 400 Watts. So it's, the industry has changed in that a, the equipment's got significantly better. Um, the education of the consumer has changed They're They're able to go online and typically kind of put together a, a picture of what they're looking for. Um, the, the financing methods got easier and then they got harder, right? So if you're just getting into solar in the last six months, uh, sorry, <laughs> you, you missed some of the golden days for sure. Um, but I think in general, it's, it's a very, I kind of joke that this industry created a half a million jobs for maybe 300,000 people that should have stayed out of work. I think it's a, a bit of a saturated market. So you're also going up against misinformation, um, sometimes lack of quality on the install side and a lot of cannibalization on price. It's, it's changed a lot for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that that is one of the things that I, I kind of miss about the, the the olden days is that the, the entire community, it seemed, were solar enthusiasts, both on the, on the customer side. You didn't really have to push them like, oh, hey, you got to buy this now. You didn't have to push them. These were people that were interested in it. They were seeking it out on their own because right. they, they just liked this philo philosophically. They liked the idea of being energy independent or being, you know, a green or carbon neutral, if you want to call it. Or in the case of a lot of my clients, they want it to be like, self-sufficient for emergency preparedness reasons they didn't have to be sold on you know solar savings they they, they just like the idea hey it's here it's mine it's on when i say it's on you know nobody can cut me off and yeah, so yeah. you know justin i think that's probably a good place to start the conversation is is first of all understanding why people buy batteries uh, or why people buy solar with battery storage because a lot of times, again, it's not because you you went out and, and evangelized them that they have to do this to save on their electric bill. A lot of times they already have other reasons and motivations why they're seeking out this type of a, a energy independence you know, status. So can you t talk a little bit about, about why, why do people invest in solar plus storage? That's a great question. You, Joe, you know, the thing is, right, when somebody looked in investing in solar, 95% of the time, it's because they got a high electric bill, right? It's the first time they go, you know, well, my bill was 300, 400 bucks this summer. I did not expect that. And my friend has solar and he's saving money. Maybe I'll see what this is all about. It's, it's typically a reaction to something that happens to them. And when people start looking at batteries, there's a reason that they're looking at that. Either they're concerned about the, their home's ability, you know, to funk run in a, in an outage situation, their ability to survive when the power goes out um, or they had a weather event or something like that, that instigated, you know, them to really want this. Um, and I think that when people ask you like, Hey, you know, I'm looking to get batteries on my house and they say that to you, that is as much of a buying indicator that it's time to tap into their kind of what they're feeling and why and their, and their why. And I guess as sales guys, we have a tendency to, you mess, you know, you nailed it, kind of be a little evangelical about the way we give information when really we just need to be good listeners and we just need to ask the right questions. Absolutely. And that's why one of the things that we talk about all the time in, in Solar Surge University and on the live trainings here is that, you know, you have to start your sales process with proper needs analysis, right? You need to interview the prospect to understand what their needs, goals, and pain points are before you start designing or, or pitching any kind of a solution. And so that's why one of the first questions that we ask, and one of the first questions I ask personally when I'm talking to a homeowner interested in solar is, so, hey, Mr. Prospect, tell me, what, what caused you to look into solar in the first place? Was, was it primarily looking for something to reduce the electric bill, or are you looking for something for emergency backup purposes? 
and then just let them go from there. Because you're going to hear all sorts of answers. You know, when, when we started at Solar Surge here, so Solar Surge in its current in its current business form launched in January 2021. And like the, the very next month, right after that, we walk right into the Texas deep freeze. And this was national news. And of course, for Texans, it was like right happening right now, major pain. You know, the power's out. Many of my clients I talked to, power was down for several days or a week at a time. They had to evacuate their home. Several people had, um, you know, water damage because pipes had burst and things like this. And so they, they had a real pain point and they had a real story to tell, too. And I wanted to make sure that, that they were able to get that story out of what, what that actually meant to them to lose the power and then to lose the heat and then to lose the water service and what that felt like. And again, I didn't have to really sell anything. Um, I just basically had to sit there and listen of what that felt like when they could not rely on the power grid to keep the, the, the critical systems in their home going. And then, of course, be able to come back and, and provide a solution to that. Uh, Justin, I'll throw it over to you. I mean, that's that's everything. That's I think they, successful salespeople talk less than they listen, right? That's if there's anything you can you can take away from this. You can you can shut the the webinar down now. If if you're not practicing that concept, then you are not selling anything. It's or you're selling under a weird premise. I mean, look at Maui right now, right? The islands on fire. Think about think about what these people, um, the value of their air filtration systems and their air conditionings right now while the island is without power and there's a fire burning, right? Not only is it keeping their power running, is it keeping them cool, but it's allowing their air filter to trap all that smoke and that dust to keep their lungs healthy. Like the value of these systems in the correct application cannot be underestimated, right? You never really want to have to use a battery, right? That's hopefully, you know, you're in a, in a market where it can just sit there to protect you, right? Um, and most of the times, right. You know, these things, if you're going to get your investment out of it, you want to use it every day somehow. And, and, but a lot of our country is on a one in one net metering still. And in those markets, you know, these batteries are going to be used for backup for safety purposes, but you know, there's the savings aspect of being able to store that extra power for my battery. And then there's the aspect of trying to stay alive and keep grandma on oxygen and keep the kids close. Like there's, there's your, if you talk to your customer and you listen, instead of talking, they're going to tell you why, why they're there. That's, that's it. So yeah. you don't want to miss out on, on the opportunity to, to, to fix a person's problem. That's how capitalism started. <laughs> so. Yeah. Great, great points, Justin. And again, for, for, for those of you sales professionals out there, if you're worried like, Oh, how am I going to possibly sell this? That the monthly payment is double what, what the system would have been if it had been solar only. Don't, don't, don't worry about the, the, the price. Don't make price the issue unless price is the issue, which is, by the way, it's almost never the issue. And we can talk more about that later on or maybe in a different training, how to overcome the pricing objection. But don't assume that price is going to be the issue and you have to sell on monthly payment or on the ticket price. Um, now, now, for example, people have been investing in home backup generators for decades. There is no ROI on a home backup generator. Right. There is no fancy spreadsheet and say, oh, well, your tax credit and then the, uh, over this many years you are going to save this. There's, there's, there's none of that. When you're selling a backup generator, you're, you're selling peace of mind. Right. You're selling the homeowner some security, some insurance against that experience that I described earlier where they lost the power and then they lost the water and they lost the food. It's insurance that that doesn't happen to them ever again. That's a, a much stronger motivator, frankly, for, for most people. That, that's a much stronger motivator than, you know, save me 10 bucks, 20 bucks on my electric bill. And so, again, if you can ask those questions during your initial discovery engagement, let them tell their full story of what happened and what the implications were and how, how frequently they lose power in, in their area. Let them get that all out. Right. And then also make sure that you can you can also get out. OK, so going forward. In an emergency, what are the things that you you consider have to have items, necessary items, and then we can design a battery backup solution to match that? Uh, Justin, I'll throw yeah. it back over to you. No, I love that. Needs to have, wants to have. Is this battery for comfort reasons? Is it for function reasons? Um, I mean, yeah. At the, at the end of the day, our job is to be consultants to our clients, um, and you know, there's so many options out there <clears throat> that. You know, by listening to your client, you will definitely find the right option for them. There's no question. Okay. 
Well, let's let's talk specifics now. Um, you know, Justin, I know obviously you, you're you're here on uh, as a representative of Franklin WH. And by the way, guys, the, the Franklin battery for for my my personal projects, the Franklin battery is the battery that I most frequently use. Um, no, no, nobody's paying me to say that. This, this is just what I found that is working the best for the clients that I'm working with because most of my clients tend to be in southern states like Texas and Florida where they want a whole house backup that can provide air conditioning backup as well, including air conditioning use at nighttime. And so I know one of the things I really like about your product is just the raw size and power of it. You know, it's, you know, <laughs> the air, air conditioning is a heavy load and right. there's a lot of batteries on the market, but there are a few batteries that can, that can take the kind of startup surge demand that the Franklin whole home does. And I think that's why I, you know, tend to use that on a lot of my projects and why you and I have had a chance to, to work a lot together. But Justin, why don't we, you know, switch gears a little bit and talk to some of the technical, some of the technical factors that go into choosing the right battery for your solar plus storage project? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you just mentioned, you know, output is is important to run your appliances. I mean, there's two facets to the solar system. You have your essentially the gas tank, right? Your capacity at which you can store the power and hold it. Then you have your output capacity, which is the power at which you can deliver that power. So it's important, right? It, it, there are two very different functions, you know, too much output and not enough capacity. That battery is not going to last very long for the customer. Um, so you do kind of want to marry those two together. I think, you know, in, in the Texas market specifically, where you've got AHJs that allow for you to just go back and back up the whole panel in certain areas like say Frisco, you know, I think in Austin in those markets, they're still working with meter main combos. Um, but, you know, it, every, every battery has its feature. I like to think of the Franklin as more of an analog or think of this way that the Franklin's kind of like a, a really buff, strong guy that you bring in to do your lifting for you. Right. We've got a really robust hardware. Um, the battery is extremely high capacity comparison to like some of the other more mainstream models. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, we wanted to be, build something that was big and strong and easy, you know, just point and shoot, go pick up that couch, you know, strong man. Um, the the battery is built for that. Uh, more like a Rolex watch in its analog sense than that of an Apple watch, right, that op op operates digitally. Um, and I think, Joe, you know, that's why we've had some success and so much success in the field with the product is because it is built to handle those scenarios. Um, that's what it was intended for is to provide whole home power. It's, it wasn't built for a battery to just save you money. Turns out in the, some of these NEM time of use markets, having a high capacity actually turns out to generate much more savings, right? Um, at the end of the day with energy costs rising and getting higher and higher, um, if three or four States already that are peaking over 40 cents a kilowatt hour and their demand charges, that, that paints a really nice picture for storage as both a financial savings tool and one that can power your home. But simply put, there's a few really important topics um, or, you know, uh, things that we're going to want to look at. What's our ca capacity? What's our output? What's the chemistry of the battery? Does it fit the needs? Can it go indoor, outdoor? How, how long is it going to last? And, um, and then, you know, how is it, what's it rated for, right? So I think a lot of people don't know that you know, unless you have a NEMA 3R or an IP67 rating on the UL side, these batteries aren't waterproof or they are, right? So your, your AHJ is going to come and say, is this waterproof? No, you're in a flood zone. That battery needs to go five feet in the air. So knowing the capabilities of the products you're selling are going to really feed into the Id idiosyncrasies of your design issues that you come up against in the field. Yep, yep. I think that's that's one thing, uh, folks, that you have to be prepared for first, is that if you're talking to a prospect who's specifically interested in solar with battery storage, especially if that's somebody who's actively shopping, actively soliciting bids for solar plus storage installation, you, you need to set yourself apart from the competition. There will be multiple salespeople in that sale. Most homeowners I talk to, they get two or three, some get four or five, six different quotes before they make a decision. And if you're talking about a, a solar plus whole house backup system, you really need to be un, uh, to understand how the detailed specifications of the battery system uh, match back to the requirements that the homeowner shared with you during the discovery process. Meaning, 
you know, okay, based on this system design, the overall system has X amount kilowatts surge power. It has X amount kilowatt hours of reserve energy storage, which means, Mr. Homeowner, those two air conditioning units that you told me you have, we can run each of those for a total of, you know, let's say 10 hours combined, you know, be right. between recharge. And, and be able to ex explain what those numbers mean. Um, Justin, it looks like you've got some some slides to go through here. So I'm, I'm going to kick it back over to you. I just you. pulled that up because you were literally going over my third slide perfectly. <laughs> so I thought we'd support you with some infrastructure here. Um, yeah, you nailed it, right? How much power do I have access to? How long can I run it? What can I power? How safe and how durable is it? Can it go outside? Does it have to go inside? You know, these are these are going to be really, really big factors, right? I think there's certain batteries that aren't rated to be, you can't even put them next to each other. Um, not to throw Tesla under the bus, but they've had a few fires up in Northern California. And there's a reason that they only allow, they ask for those to be three feet apart, right? So from the from our side, right? All of these things are going to factor into the design, um, how expensive it gets to the farther you get away from the main panel due to these requirements, the more difficult it becomes to design these. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, chemistry becomes an issue there where the, where the equipment's going to be placed. Oh, by the way, for you installers out there, I would just recommend that, that you do make sure that you amend your site survey process. If you're going to be doing a solar plus storage pro pro project, to figure out where all the storage equipment is gonna be installed as well, not just the solar equipment. It's very, very important because as, as many of us know who have been in the contracting side of the business, you know, having to call audibles on game day and put this here, move this here, that can become very, very costly. If everything doesn't work out, you end up with four or five guys sitting on the clock with no work to do because the, we have to make an emergency call back to the engineer to figure out how we can actually connect all this stuff. All right. Yeah, I'm not proud of the amount of hundred dollar bills I handed out to inspectors in the early 2010s <laughs> to get past some of this. That's for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, right? It's explaining this to the customers. I think most customers are pretty savvy. They, you know, when they're coming for you and they're asking for batteries, you can assume they've done their research, right? Or they have a friend that has storage and they turn them to you, whatever it is, they're going to have some knowledge, but it's a key to bring them back into your knowledge space, right? <clears throat> Put some bumpers up on the conversation and help drive that downstream to the point of actually getting the sale. Right. And I think that starts with really explaining the role of ESS in the ecosystem of a PV system, right? People don't understand like, why do I even need batteries? Right. Does what, you say, hey, my grid goes down. Did you know your grid goes down when the power goes out, that your solar will not work? Like, there's a, still a significant amount of folks out there that don't know that. Um, so explain to them, no, you know, part of that is it comes to this, I don't know how we'd say it, like a, um, it's, a, it's like water, right? So I always like to think of being in a solar home. It's kind of like at the end, of, you're living at the bottom of a mountain um, and you always need water, right? So like... Consider the snow is the photons that the solar energy, you know, captures. But really what it's doing, doing is converting it to water, which is what you need to live. If you eat snow, you'll dehydrate yourself. It's a fact. So we need to convert this into something the home can use. So you've got that water running downstream and now it gets all the way down to the mountain. And now your, your house is right there where the stream dumps into the, into the feet of the water. Now that's where it gets filtered by the inverter, right? Really simply put, the inverter is there to take that power, convert it to DC to AC, which is what your house runs on. So with respect to that, you know, after that, I've got filtered water that I can pull from. But if I have a solar system, like that water is just passing me by and I'm in a non-net metered situation or I'm in a time of use situation, I can only grab so much of that water that, that's coming down the mountain. This gets really complicated to customers. They don't understand that. No, the, the tank, the pond at which you pull that water from is the utility. So you're going to feed it into there, but you don't get to, you don't really have access to that when you pull, you know, you only get to use what you made and pull it out in a one-to-one. -one, that's an ideal situation. Great ROI on solar. You're selling the customer. No problem. Batteries are there for just for backup. As Joe mentioned for customers that, you know, have life events that have motivated them that way. But the reality is everything's changing. The utilities don't have a big master system for everybody anymore. In fact, if you send your water to them, they're not going to even let you into the pond. Right. So solar is your water, solar power generated. Your battery is your water tank to store that water. Your faucet 
your appliances are the faucet that turns that water on. And a really simple analogy to help under customers understand and say, why do I even have a battery? You know, well, your solar is like a solar power generator on Red Bull, right? It's full send all the time. Like it only knows how to go. It only knows one speed. I have a few friends like that. So it's important to, you know, have a way to capture this, be able to use it for later. And that's where the capacity, the output, all that becomes so important, right? How big's my pond? Do I have a little, a little thing? Cause all I, I only need water a little bit every once in a while, or do I have a whole irrigation system that feeds into my house right there? Um, so when we're designing, you know, the perfect system, right? There's a few things we want to take into consideration is what are my utilities nuances, right? If you don't understand how the utility is charging the customer in various times a day um, and what the battery is capable of, you'll never be able to perceive the true value to the homeowner. Um, so first off, for especially for some of you guys, you know, Joe, how many states do you sell into? We are in 16 states now, I believe. Okay. That's a lot of utilities with different, with different savings, with different numbers, with different uh, net metering policies, right? What would you say is the the market you have the most success in? Texas and Florida. Right. And I was probably has something to do with the hurricanes and the uh, deep freezes, I imagine, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Because there, there, there's a, again, there, there's a, there's a fresh in the mind pain point that the homeowner has why they are not, they are not comfortable being just fully reliant on the electric grid. Exactly. Right. So what role is capacity going to play in my savings and my survival? All of these different things, these little nuances are going to be different for every customer. So I'm not trying to scare you. Right. But up until now, so selling solar was just a math, a math project. Right. Just here's how many, here's how many, here's the, here, how much you get, here's how much you get to keep. This is what your bill looks like afterwards. This is far more complex. However, you know, you guys have some great tools out there. Um, I know the green button data you can upload now into a lot of these, these quoting tools and get really hour by hour accurate quoting information, which is great. And, um, you know, so we, what do I need my system to do in the outage? I think that's asking your customers, you know, what would you like to see in an outage? What are you looking for? All right. Don't say, well, oh, my, this battery yep. can power all your lights and your washing machine and your AC, right? You just gave away the reveal to the customer, right? You ask them what they want to back up and reverse engineer that. Okay, great. So based off of what you're telling me, saying you want to run this and this and this, my advice is this. So be very careful not to jump in too quickly. Listen to what they're asking for, what they want to do. They even want backup power. Are they in California? They just need like high capacity to catch the solar that's coming in, but they're in San Diego and they haven't had an outage in six years, right? Doesn't mean the battery is any less valuable to that consumer as to the guy that Joe mentioned, you know, that needs six batteries for the, uh, <laughs> to get him through a crazy storm for his, you know, three acre property. And then does, does determining as the customer, is it, is it an investment ROI decision or a comfort decision? Joe, you and I mentioned a couple of times, right? That a lot of guys buy this, not, not, they don't care about the ROI. I didn't care about the ROI when I got solar. I just want solar panels my house. I knew it was going to save me money. I and I never thought about like, oh, well, will I get my money back in six years to 11 years? I'm going to go with the guy that gets my money back at eight. No, I went with the guy that made me feel confident in his abilities uh, to design the system and the guy that felt confident and knew what he was doing. Because I got like six yep. quotes. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And I, I can't tell you guys how many times I hear this from homeowners because one of, one, of the, one of the interview questions that I ask is, hey, have you gotten any other quotes from any other companies? Usually the answer is yes. Okay, what prevented you from going forward with one of the proposals that you have? And I hear it all the time. Well, the sales guy didn't sound like he didn't know what he was talking about. I was asking him about if the battery could do this or if I even needed a battery for backup power. And he told me that, oh, no, everything's going to work fine just with sunlight only. And it was like, the, the, clearly the, the homeowner was not confident in the competence of the representative, particularly in the area of product knowledge. And that's why Solar Surge is so big on product knowledge. And by the way, guys, our free stuff on Solar Surge YouTube is, is, is better than a lot where you get in some of these paid how to sell solar trainings. But if you really want to Amen. dig into the details of really understanding this at an expert level and how to match battery specs to different net metering policies and different utility policies, that, that's why we have Solar Surge University.
so that you can learn all this information so that you will be like I often am, you will be the most thoroughly prepared person in that competitive selling situation. Because the homeowner, again, homeowner that's investing in storage, they're investing in peace of mind. It's all about security and confidence. It's not about, and the pricing has nothing to do with any of this at this point. At this point, we haven't right. even talked about pricing. We're talking about what is the homeowner's requirements and pain points, and that's what we're starting at. And then we're, we're matching battery capabilities and specifications to those requirements that the homeowner expressed to you. All right. right. Now, be before we even get into pricing, we're going to talk about why we are the best company to deliver this solution for you. We're going to talk about yeah. our value and our competence long before we even show them what the price is. Because frankly, you know, Justin, we were talking about this earlier. N none of this is cheap. N there's no, there is no cheap solar plus storage, right? All of this is expensive, whether you consider $40,000 expensive or $200,000 expensive, but none of this is going to be cheap. But again, the price isn't really the issue anyway. So let's focus on getting the right solution for the homeowner. I'll pass it to yeah. you. Yeah, no, I love that. So, you know, it starts with, you know, knowing, knowing what your job is in the home. Right. And the, I, mean, I know I've said this earlier, you know, this, this industry is filled with some bad actors, um, but there's also some great actors, right? Some really great people in it that kind of bring us back to earth. And I think first things first, when you walk into a house, um, you know, understand the kind of golden rules of storage, right? Like if you have a customer in a one in one net metering, right? If you tell the customer they're going to save money with a battery, you're lying, right? They're in the, they're in the perfect scenario for solar payback. Now, it doesn't mean that a battery will not provide tremendous benefit or give them an ROI, right? But the battery is not for saving money in a one-to-one -one customer. Eventually, it will be, right? Not everybody gets to stay in one-on-one -on -one forever. We're seeing the grandfathering changes um, in Missouri right now. So I've talked to probably 12 different uh, homeowners in the last week calling about Franklin batteries and because they're now only going to get two cents after having a, you know, per kilowatt hour after getting a one in one for the last decade. Um, the other big thing to watch rules to not be shady is stop telling customers that they can run a whole house on one battery, unless you know for a fact that they've got a small enough load to run a whole house on a single battery. Now a single battery is going to change depending on what brand you use, right? The Tesla Powerwall plus for instance, has like, you know, really high surge capacity and the ability to run a lot of appliances, but same capacity as the Powerwall 2, which means it's going to drain very, very quickly if the customer is trying to do whole home. Um, whereas, you know, maybe one of the smaller output <clears throat> brands I'm not going to name, you, you can barely run the fridge, right? So there, you want to make sure with customers, like whole home starts with two batteries. If they're in a one-to-one -one net metering, let them know the battery is for backup and for that reason only. Uh, being, being convicted, again, speaking with assuredness will help them. Uh, understand and trust you on that. And then a lot of guys do not know the stats, Joe. Um, but do you find that a lot when you talk to solar reps, you're surprised how little they actually know about the batteries? Well, uh, you know, I, I have the benefit that a lot of the solar reps I talk to are people that follow me on solar surge. So they, they've, they've at least watched some of these battery comparison videos. Um, but I mean, that that's so much of like, even how I got started was that I knew that there was a lot of shady actors out there that, that were overselling. Maybe they didn't even realize they were lying to the customer. Maybe they just didn't understand themselves what the capabilities and limitations were on these systems. And so that's where I saw an opportunity to fill that gap in the marketplace and say, hey, look, I'll be the guy that educates you on what all these products can and can't do. And then if you want to buy one, give me a call. And that, that, that's, that's essentially my marketing strategy here, okay? There, there's the secret sauce, guys, right? right. So it's, <laughs> it's be able to, to provide information, answer questions, um, you know, provide the right information to the homeowner that's, that's looking for an answer to that question. And what, what you're going to find is if you can be that person that can educate them on how this product can meet their needs, chances are they're going to be willing to buy from you when it comes time to buy. And that's, that's the position that we want you to be in. So again, that's why we're so big on education here. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, these are large projects with large commission potentials, more complexity, definitely more complexity in the design, more complexity in the sales process, but also a, a much larger commission potential uh, at the end of the day. And a lot of sales reps asked me too, they, they asked me, well, wait a second, you're getting commission on the batteries? And I would say, of course, we're getting commission on the batteries. Yeah. The batteries just doubled, doubled the size of the project, also tripled the complexity and the risk in the project. And so since I was able to manage that 
complexity and risk, there is comp uh, um, commensurate compensation that comes along with it as well. Yeah, if you're not making commissions on your batteries, yikes. Um, this is you're going to need to keep pretty close contact with your customers, right? That's why I always I like to explain to people when you get a solar system, that's cool. Like you you got you got a power source, right? But there's no management, there's no infrastructure to it. When you add batteries to your home, you're giving your home infrastructure. You just became grid agnostic if you do it the right way, right? The grid is just another power source like your solar panels. What's really happening is what's happening in the gateway and the battery where all the power is moving through and being distributed, right? Um, you're, you, that's how utilities run, right? They're compiled of all these little power sources all around that feed into the substation. The substation decides what power is going to go where as it's needed. Um, so I'm explaining to customers, like, listen, I can't take you off grid because there's a federal easement that protects, you know, protects all the wires and the cabling and everything else that's on your property and the ability for them to know that you have power so that your wellness is at stake. Like these are all things that are protected and why customers can't go off grid most of the time. Um, but what we can do, Mr. Customers, to build enough infrastructure that the grid becomes irrelevant, right? It's just purely there if you need it as a safety mechanism. And, and that's something you can't do with just solar. Yep, exactly. You know, the, the way I like to explain it a lot of times is, you know, we're going to put you in a position where, where you can take or leave the power company on your terms, right? You, you, if you want, you can use them as the power provider of last resort, which in, in certain time of use markets, that, that may be the most profitable way to, to employ your solar and batteries is, is to self-consume as much as possible and use the power company as the utility or the, the, the energy provider of last resort only because it's much more expensive. I mean, if you're in San Diego right now, the kind of rates that they're charging down there, you know, or even in Northern California, you know, PG&E, I believe, is, is getting close to, if not may have topped 40 cents a kilowatt hour now. Justin, you, you would know better than I. But, but in that I mean, kind of scenario, you may it. want to use. Yeah, let, let's, like, let's dig into that because that, that's another <laughs> application for batteries is not just backup power. But if your electric rates are that high, Better to just draw off your battery at nighttime than to have to buy from the utility at these these ridiculous rates. Right. I mean, so I'm going to use Southern California Edison as the example because San Diego Gas and Electric is so crazy. It's almost unbelievable. Right. You're, you can go as high as 79 cents per kilowatt hour in certain parts of San Diego <laughs> um, during those five to nine p.m. periods. Um, but it's happening across the country now. Right. This isn't this isn't a California thing. Um, so obviously in Southern California, Edison, you, you want to go off grid if you can, if you can design it that way, right? The levelized cost of solar, even, even finance to the higher PPW is going to be around, you know, uh, 11 to 17 cents, depending on how you're setting it up to the customer, maybe 20 cents on a PPA. So adding batteries is going to increase their levelized cost of energy, but it also increases their avoided cost value. So when I'm looking at you know, California, there's only a 12 cent difference between the peak rate and then what happens right after the peak rate ends. I'm going to see a much, much, much better return on investment for my customer to build a battery system that stores all the power they generated during the day, it carries it through the night. Um, and I'll show you guys some financial, some numbers on this in a second that really pencil. Um, everybody's going to start rushing back to California when they thought they had to leave it, right? <laughs> They're like, I can't sell into Cali anymore. Well, <laughs> Talk about low-hanging fruit, uh, but in Missouri, um, energy is really cheap, right? Like if from 8 p.m. until until 6 a.m., it's the same cost that you get credited from your solar for. But for whatever reason, right between 4 and 8 p.m., we know the reason the solar bell curve. They're charging you know 4x what they're actually charging you during the day. Um, this means that a customer getting solar now in Missouri. <laughs> even though they're getting nine cent credit from their system they produce every day, is still going to end up paying if they use 13 kilowatts a day, four bucks a day for being connected to the grid. If they use 13.6 kilowatt hours between four and 8 PM, it's going to cost them $4 every single day, regardless of whether I have solar or not. So it's, you know, the, we're at the stage where the, the zero bill, I think those were the glory days when you could like get it down to like negative 20 a month and the customer got a little check at the end of the year, um, those were those were some great times, right? And now we're in a situation where 
no, there's no credits and we're going to charge you a lot more for the energy when it's dark outside. So that correlates, you know, you also have the fact that, you know, you can discharge these batteries for cash now. Um, in certain markets, if you're in Hawaii, um, you can get a one-time check for, I think, forty-two fifty on a single A power. Two batteries is going to be 8500 You can do 10 years of incentives and collect up to $14,000 on a two-battery system. Um, and that's just for sending the power back between 6 and 8 p.m., right? So to understand, like, hey, the savings in all of these has changed a lot, um, but it's still really good. In fact, I want to show you guys, see if I can pull up this slide. Here we go. This is to, to paint an idea of the true value of high capacity batteries in this situation. I want to show you guys this here. So zooming in on the Southern California Edison rates. Keep it really simple, right? Uh, if I 13.6 kilowatt hours a day, which happens to be the capacity of the Franklin battery, um, I mean, you could do this with 9.1 kilowatts for usable end phase or 9.7 for solar edge or 13.5 for Tesla. Whatever it is that you want to do to build the matrix, you can use this. It's pretty simple, right? What is the value of my battery to the homeowner in a NEM or a time of use market? Well, what's my avoided cost? Okay, 52 cents and 40 cents. So between 4 and 9 p.m., if I use 13.6 kilowatt hours, I'm going to save about 7 bucks a day, 7.20 a day. And in that nighttime, I'm avoiding another $5 of energy a day, less the cost that it costs me for my solar system and the battery to produce it. So we're avoiding, a really, in, in California, over the 12 years, without any rate escalator on the utility, going bare bones, you're looking at around $28,500 of avoided cost of energy per battery that you install, less the cost to produce that energy and store it. So there is a significant delta there that I think a lot of people are maybe missing, trying to go for, I think a lot of people tend to go for the smaller battery because I can get it into the customer. It doesn't hit the ticket as much. It doesn't scare them. But the reality is their savings are going to be significantly less. If I give my customer nine, nine kilowatt hours a year, a day of energy. Um, hopefully they're not, you know, people that both work from, you know, work at work away from the office and come home at 5 PM. <laughs> you know, that's when the majority of your energy is going to be used. So again, we want to look at the nuances of the customer, look at how they're using energy, but this is a pretty blanket, a blanket generalization that you can put in your back pocket in California, two batteries with no rate escalator is looking at about 56,000 of avoided cost with Southern California Edison. I don't think a lot of people understand that the batteries literally pay for themselves before we even get into the comfort side in some of these markets. Yeah, no, that, that's an important point too, because for, again, for those of you in California that came in during the good old days where you could do hundred percent financing at 1.99 interest and save the homeowner, you know, 250 bucks a month off their, their energy costs. Yeah. Th those days are over, but you can still do one for one, even bill swaps and get storage as part of that installation. In other words, you can set them up on a solar with battery storage system, maybe let's say two Franklin batteries with your solar, set that system up to maximize self-consumption so they buy as little or, or no, no power from the grid. I mean, you're always going to buy a little bit. There's going to be rainy days and stuff. But you, the, the, the point is, use the, use the grid, use the, the, the utility company as the electricity provider of last resort, and you can still end up with a one-for-one -one even bill swap and so that the way I look at that is, okay, I freeze my energy costs, so I'm protected from inflation, and I get the emergency backup power for free. It's like an added bonus, yeah. right? And then eventually you pay the loan off. It might take 20 years, but you eventually you pay it off and you have free power. So that, that's still better than sticking with the power company. And by the way, guys, for those of us like me that started here on the East Coast, we were always selling one-for-one -one bill swaps. We, we never got the benefit of saying, hey, we're going to cut your bill in half. It was always right. like, hey, look. If you can afford to, to pay like the, the big utility here, Duke, Dominion, if you can afford to pay them 200 bucks a month, pay 200 bucks a month on your solar loan. And at least the solar loan is a fixed rate, low interest. It's not going to change. That's what we've been selling here the whole time, really, for the past six right. or seven years. Now you guys on the West Coast are going to have to make the same offer. But again, price is not the issue unless you make it the issue. There's tons you of people it right out there. there. Like, yeah. You so just there's tons nailed of people it. out there we, like... 
like me that they want solar. They're going to buy solar because they want solar. Price, they might justify it, but they're buying it because they want it. The question is, are you are you the right person to help help get them there, or is your, is your competition going to be better in a, in a better position? If you're the sales guy and you are bringing up price to the customer before they bring it up, just get out. Just run out the door. You failed your customer because you've got them away from thinking about the warm and fuzzies, like all the value that comes with this, right? Like, you can't be clear enough. Like, I used to tell my sales guys 12 years ago, if you're bringing up price per watt or PPW or just using any of the 40 acronyms <laughs> that go along with solar, like you failed. The customer is going to gloss over because it, it doesn't really add them any benefit, right? Like it, PPW doesn't tell me what equipment is on the home. It doesn't tell me the quality or the warranties of the performance. It doesn't do any of that, right? It just tells me how much the solar system costs on a single level. So yeah, the customer, here's some CSUN panels and a used Xantrax inverter and, you know, we're going to, I'm going to use a couple of legal guys from Home Depot and we're going to wire this baby in for you for a 180 a watt, right? Um, <laughs> the customer literally got nothing, right? Like there's no yeah. value in that. And, and it's, and by the way, it's a traveling, we do this because it's a traveling uh, install team. So uh, we're able to save you a lot of money, right? And then when you have a problem in six months, your solar system is worthless. So determining value yep. on the product is really key. Determining product on the installer is key. If you have faith, in your installer and your install team and your crews and the products that you're selling, like you can go out and explain to this customer, like I'm going to be a resource here for a long time, right? We expect this to work for your family for a long time, many years to come, right? Don't re don't refer to like, this is a uh, 1.675, well, you know, like it's too much. It's a lot. It's a little, right? It's great or it's bad. Like you speak in generalizations that your customer is going to understand that keeps things very clear and don't put them in a box, assuming that they're going to think like you who beat this, these products up every single day, right? We're obsessed. My wife and I were just at the Rose Garden in Portland, Joe, and there's these like really like rare Japanese dragon roses that they have featured there that we were like, we were like, this would be really cool to see because you see them when you're walking into the gate, they kind of advertise it as the feature. Well, we, we got stopped. I, I talked to everybody. I love to have conversations. And I'm ta literally talking to the head groundskeeper of this Rose Garden. He's been there for like 21 years. And it took him about 10 minutes because I asked like, man, the color on these is so different than the ones we have in our, in our house. Right. I, I really would love to be able to do this on our roses. He goes, he went on an 11 minute diatribe about chemicals and food and feed. And I was just like, bro, just take me to the dragon roses, man. Like, I don't care. You know, like don't become that guy. And customers are very simple when it comes to what they're looking to buy. For the most part, they're asking for your advice. They're asking for your expertise. Um, and you should always provide that with like, is this what you're looking for? Is this fit that need? Um, but try, oh, again, I mean, we said this in the beginning, ask more questions than you say things. That's at the end of the day, it's the only way you're going to find the value. You know, what your customer is really looking at. Um, and I just want to bring up one more point since we, oh yeah, go ahead, Joe. Oh, no, I just, I saw that we had a question in here. Um, by the way, thank, thank you guys for, for all the comments and all the, all the, uh, uh, the support here. But I did see a question that came in here uh, from Don in California mm -hmm. with the existing solar. What is the ROI on batteries or is it worth it on the old net metering plan? Like, is it, is it worth it to even add batteries if you're on the old net metering plan? If you're on so, a one-to-one. -one. thanks for that. Go, go ahead, yeah. Justin. No, Joe, that's a great question, Don. Um, if you're on the original one-to-one, -one, is it worth it to add batteries? Depends where you live. If I lived in San Diego, I would say, and you're on one-to-one, -one, like, um, unless you really want them, right? Um, the ROI is not going to change on your solar system. It's not, the, the ROI is essentially kind of zero on your battery. Assuming the solar system's designed the right way and it's going. Like, I'm sorry to say, it's not the best news. It's not what you want to hear. Um, but, but I'm guessing if you're on an NEM 1.0 plan, you've only got a certain amount of time left on your grandfathering and your system's probably running a little bit low on performance. Uh, do you have a bill yet, Mr. Customer? No, my bill's still negative 10. Cool. I'm gonna call you back in four years. We'll we'll hang out. Right. Um, or is your wife on any medical devices? Oh, she is. Oh, so an outage would actually have a real implications for you in this particular situation. It's not about 
saving money. It's about backing it. Great. So we can just kind of back this thing up one time, leave it parked so your wife stays safe. Will that give you some peace of mind since you've already paid off your solar? Yeah, great. Customer might want it more than the ROI, more than the payback. But with NEM 2.0 and NEM 3.0, the more batteries, the faster the payback. It's not less. So the less capacity you have, the longer the payback is going to be. Because, I mean, in real, realistic terms, right, lost power is lost money. So a lot of the time, what we're going to have here is you're going to have a solar system that's, oops, went the wrong way here, um, you know, a seven to 12 kilowatt system, right? Well, that can generate 50 to 70 kilowatt hours in the summer per day. How is that 10 kilowatt, 15, even 20 kilowatt hour battery treating you at this point, right? You are, you are essentially needing to do a 60, 40 balance during the day to nighttime to when you use energy while the sun's out and when you use it, like that kind of forces you into a corner. The more capacity, the more you get to realize the savings that your solar system is generating. So if I'm losing 15 to 20% of my system every single day in an NEM scenario, or, you know, my ROI is going to significantly decrease. So it is about finding the sweet spot, figuring out how they use. I think that's why green button data is so important um, in sizing these systems and using that to, to really get a, a clear ROI. But at the end of the day, you know, lost power is lost money. So every kilowatt you produce from your system that's not stored accredited is a hole in your investment. So protect your ROI, use the power you produce every day. High capacity is kind of king in that scenario, at least in my opinion. Yeah, and let, let me unpack that a little bit too for some of the, some of the viewers. So when, when we talk about using a battery in a self-consumption mode, meaning that we, we want to be able to, to run the house off the battery during evening hours so we don't have to buy anything from the utility, particularly for those of you that are in California where you have that, I believe it's 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. peak rate hours. Arizona has similar like 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. or 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. peak rate hours. Well, guys, those are the hours where your air conditioner tends to have to run the hardest. Right. And so if you only have a single battery system and that battery isn't, isn't, doesn't have enough capacity to carry the load of your air conditioner, yeah, you might be able to run the fridge off that battery during peak rate hours, but you're still running the heaviest offenders, i.e. the air conditioning compressors. You're still having to run those off the grid. So, so capacity does matter both when you're talking about um, whole home backup or whole home self-consumption. You want to make sure that the battery has enough, cap uh, enough power and storage capacity to carry the heavy loads that you're looking to, um, uh, to utilize in that self-consumption uh, scenario. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not to mention, you know, there are so many other value stacks. If you're in Northern California and you're facing regular outages, I, I'd love to know, Don, you throw in the comments, where are, where are you located? Let us know. Cause I, I, I love to unpack this cause you're on a, and this is a great example of what a lot of the customers you're going to, we're going to see every, every day are going to be customers that got some solar. Their kids grew up. You know, I, I had a four kilowatt system, but by the time I moved from my house, I needed a 6.5, right? My daughter grew up, started running Xbox, all the different things. Now, the now the storage system that you selected for your customer is really important. Like, how agnostic is it? What equipment can it work with? Can you expand onto the system in the future? Does a customer have a bunch of little children that potentially in five to seven years from now is going to want to add capacity or buy them electric cars? Am I going to be buying my daughter a gas powered car in three years or am I going to be buying her an EV? Right. Electrification, <laughs> everything that's happening right now in the market steers towards, uh, you know, needing more solar, more power, more batteries. Um, and with the instability of the grid as it, as it is and with the rising costs, storage is always going to be a very good solution for people, um, especially in California, especially in Texas especially in Florida. <laughs> um, yep. Yep. It's, By the way, it looks like Don, Don is from Orange County. So he, he's probably on Southern Cal Edison. Yeah. And so you go back to those rates, Don, right? You're still paying 50 cents a kilowatt hour between 5 and 9 p.m., even with the solar system, right? So you probably have a true up bill unless you design the system really well. Um, then, yeah, you probably have a little bit true up. And this adding a battery would eliminate that true up. So that's just part of the ROI to start. Um, Josh had a good question here. 
Uh, is Franklin creating a microgrid solution, aka Tesla, where people get paid for sending kilowatt hours back to the grid? Um, I'm glad you brought that up. I want to show you guys something on the slides here. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, this is one of the biggest value props. Uh, if you are happen to be selling a Franklin system in the home, I'm sure I know Joe probably does this a lot. You really want to use the app, right? You don't need to do all the talking. You can actually use the technology now to show the customer how it works and keep it really simple. Um, I bring this up because you asked about VPP, right? Uh, in these new markets, we want to be able to distribute. Distributed energy has a high value to these to these utilities. They're willing to pay a premium for power when the grid is low, um, whether it's MCE or the PCE utilities. We've worked with a lot of different VPPs to kind of dial this out. But you guys can see here, you know, what you would do in that case scenario is I program during the peak months that I want. You guys can see here I have it set for August and September, which is for an NEM 3.0 scenario. This allows me to discharge the grid back, back to discharge to the grid and sell at the rate that is about, as you guys can see here, anywhere between three bucks and 374 a kilowatt hour when it's needed. And I can discharge uh, as much or as little, as much power of my battery as I want. I can set my battery up to make sure that it has storage. It has a little bit left when I, after I'm done draining so I can make it through the night um, and not pay 40 cents. Um, or 50 cents a kilowatt hour. So yes, we are doing the same things. Uh, the difference between us and Tesla is we're not competing with the other installers for that business, right? So we, we as Franklin, we've just made the hardware and we've really tried to bring it in a way that you, it enables you guys to kind of grab those programs by the horn. Um, I see a lot of great installers right now that have options to join their collective. Um, it, which means that they'll come to you. And if there's a VPP program that opens up in your area, a demand response, like you, you know, they have first right of refusal to enroll you in it and give you the opportunity. So um, a lot of cool things happening in the space, but you know, we're not trying to compete with our installers. We're not trying to go direct to customers. We're just trying to make really good hardware um, and then teach you guys how to sell it. Right. Yep. Yep. And by the way, the support has been great, guys. I've, I've done dozens and dozens of solar with Franklin battery projects. Um, as again, if you follow the channel for any length of time, you know, that it is one of the products that uh, that I do stand behind and that I do find is a very good fit for a lot of my clients looking for solar with whole home battery backup. Um, by the way, we, we do have a hard stop here at the top of the hour. Yeah. Um, so I do see I do see a question here from from a Facebook user. I don't know who the user is, but asking what's the price for the online university course? Um, the retail price is nine ninety eight. You can go to solarsurge.pro. So solarsurge.pro is the the site for solar professionals. Solarsurge.net is the site for homeowners. So if you go to solarsurge.pro, you can get more information or enroll in the course. Um, also, if you're not sure whether Solar Surge University is a good fit for you, um, you know, take advantage of the free strategy call that we offer with me and Dan so that we can just kind of talk through where you are in your solar business uh, and if, if it even makes sense for you to work with us or to go through our online course. Uh, but again, we put together the course because we want you all who do call yourselves part of the Solar Surge community to be the, the most thoroughly well prepared uh, professionals in that competitive selling situation. Um, by the way, before we run out of time, Justin, I just wanted to say thank you again for taking time out of your schedule uh, to be here to, to educate and provide value to the audience. Again, folks, Justin Hopkins, Senior Director of Strategic Accounts at um, uh, Franklin WH Battery. And I also wanted to just announce to you guys, uh, my, my co-host, Daniel, who's, who's usually here with me, uh, just had a, a healthy baby girl, and he is enjoying a little bit of downtime with his family. So here's uh, Daniel and baby Peyton. And uh, from what I hear, uh, dad, mom, and baby are all doing well. And he's looking forward to coming back to you guys and uh, joining you on next week's. Uh, Justin, anything else you'd like to share with the audience here before we have to, uh, before we have to sign out? So much, so much. So we'll have to do it again. I think that's the, I think that's the only way. Um, <laughs> anytime good. you'll have me back. Good. And, again, I, and I look forward to seeing you in, in Las Vegas next month as well. Uh, Justin, again, thank you so much, folks. Thank you for spending more of your time with Solar Surge. Hope you got great value out of today's training and we will see you on the next training. Same time, same place next week. Absolutely. Appreciate you.